What's up, guys? Come see me on the road right now. Go to SavileCanoComedy.com for tickets. Uh, April 7th, I'm in Seattle with the guys at the Climate Pledge Arena. April 8th at the Keller Auditorium in Portland. We have two shows. The second one still has tickets. Uh, Banger, Maine on April 27th. The Wang Theater in Boston. Three shows, April 28th and 29th that weekend. Uh, two shows are sold out, so there's one show left to get tickets. Then we go. Maverick Center in Utah, May 5th. Belco Theater in Denver, May 6th. Uh, let's see what else here. Then we go into Texas. We're going to Arlington, Austin at the Moody Center, and Sugarland, Texas at the Smart Financial Center, May 19, 20, and 21. And just to round out the summer right now, these are the last dates I have before the new dates are announced. There's going to be a lot of new dates announced soon, so if you don't hear it, just check back. But we got Columbus on June 2nd, Cleveland on June 3rd at the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse and the Schottenstein Center, respectively. Two huge venues there. The Fox Theater in Detroit on June 4th. June 15th, we're in Minneapolis. Uh, June 16th, Des Moines at Wells Fargo Arena. June 17th, the T-Mobile Center in Kansas City. And the last dates right now before we announce new one new ones. Nashville, Grand Ole Opry, July 27th. Uh, Gamebridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis on the 28th. And St. Louis, we got two in St. Louis on the 29th at the Stifle Theater and one there's tickets available so i hope to see you on the road and practical jokers every thursday nights at 10 brand new episodes right now on tbs thank you guys so much april 12th austin texas sold out april 13th san antonio we have a few show, uh, tickets left may 5th the second show in buffalo has a few ticks left may 6th in ithaca a few ticks left may 7th albany is sold out Australia is on sale now. We got Sydney's on sale in June. We are adding Melbourne. We are adding Brisbane. All those tickets at ChrisDComedy.com. New York City, Radio City Music Hall, September 22nd, all sold out. So we added September 23rd, the theater at Madison Square Garden. Got a few tickets left for that. September 23rd, New York City, ChrisDComedy.com. Get some merch up at ChrisDComedy.com if you're in the Boston shows and all the, the merch sold out. Guess what, baby? Those sh shirts are available online. They're really cool uh, Chrissy Chaos shirts with the Boston Celtics logo. Um, and we got new merch coming. My Vice show every Tuesday, 10 p.m., Super Maximum Retro Show. Watch the show. I'm going to start to, I think, live tweet it or Instagram it um, because the ratings are not doing well. So ChrisDComedy.com for everything. Watch my show on Vice, Super Maximum Retro Show. Don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, don't hesitate to say, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, you and I must make a pact. We must bring salvation back. Just call my name and I'll, hey, babe. Hey, babe. How you doing? I think we did do that I one already. I feel like we did it. But you know what? If we and did- And I feel like we did it two episodes ago. <laughs> then if we did, we did. What we do is, that. which one did you like better? This one or the one from two episodes ago? Yeah, because ago? I remember singing that from the heart. Yeah. Because when I sing, even if it's these theme songs, I leave it all out there. Right. You do leave it all out there. I don't know another way. Can I ask you a question? I leave it all out there no matter what I do. You always do that. You always- you I leave it. You're a guy, you give it 100%. You remind me, you are comedy's Post Malone. Thank you so I much. I would say you're the Post Malone of comedy. You go 100%. Yes. You go all day, every Hard day. And paint. you like a Bud Light. I like a Bud Light. And so does <laughs> yeah. Post. Yeah. I saw him on your Impractical Joker show just with yes. the Bud Lights. Yes. And I was like, this guy yeah, loves Bud Light. I saw him on your Impractical Joker show. <laughs> 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 I do. I have a show in Impractical Joker show. Yeah, no. He, uh, the show has been great. We're Let me in, tell you Impractical Jokers with the guest is like the, it's like another thing. It's, yeah, I it's, like it. It's different now. It's different. It, it's a vibe. It's a different thing. And people, the reason it's been great is the people that have come on have owned it. A lot of the people have been our friends. Yeah. A lot of people have been people that we were dying to work with already yeah. or that have come to us and been like, like I've been watching for 10 years yeah. and it shows and they come on and it's just it's exciting because you don't know what we have to tailor the bit to them right then you don't know what they're going to bring to the table so the first week we had uh uh with the first week we had Brett Michaels lead singer of Poison sure dude by the way Brett Michaels no relation to Shawn Michaels no relation to Shawn Michaels no relation to Al Michaels wow right okay and no relation to Gianna up. Michaels Gianna, I know Gianna yes. Michaels. You know her. She yes. has, she's been out of the limelight, but she was in it for a while. Liar. I yeah. know Gianna Michaels so, big time. Um, so anyway, uh, so so by the way, July 16th of this year, 
he's playing the PNC. Uh, Brett Michaels and with with I think with oh, like, I you to post Malone. No, Brett Michaels and Paul Rudd was also on episode one. Ant Man, Ant Man. He just he just dipped in and like it was like I'm I'm coming on. It was a great episode. Him, the guys, and I are going to be on stage at the PNC performing with Brett Michaels. Literally on, on stage performing all the hits. I literally think that this new thing, this what first of He's all, called it party show. gras. What a fucking name! And guess what else? We're all wearing capes. Wow! I swear to God, that's what real heroes July wear. 16th. Not all real heroes yeah, wear them, but yeah. most real heroes do. Some wear capes. do. You know what I think too? Yeah. With this new Impractical Jokers format, I have to think that week by week the views go up every week, and that's what I. <laughs> and that's what I think. And that we've been going up. The, I you go say. up every week, and if if it goes up for eight weeks, <laughs> if it goes up for eight straight weeks, I just think like that's. I just want to see more of it. Yeah. Well, look, to our fans right now, they have the option to pick up 11. They haven't yet, and we need good ratings. And What I like about it is also what I like, because now, because a lot of times it wouldn't be on True TV, and then you're like, damn it, I missed it. Well, now it's on TBS. It's on TBS and, and True every week, but every TBS week. is a big fight. TBS a, is big. I like. I wouldn't care if I saw it there all the time. So what So what I think they're doing, I think every episode's on TBS right now, and I think they want to see if we're going to get ratings on TBS, and if they do, I think they're going to move us over to TBS. That's what I think. I think that so all it, the ratings come from TBS and, and it literally goes up incrementally <laughs> every single week. It went huge up, increments. It went up. It went up with Post Malone. It went up last week with Anthony Davis. My mom was on last week. Yeah. Let me tell and you. Then you this week, so, oh, wait. What, when is this coming out? Oh, two la weeks. So last week, last was, week John was John Mayer. Mayer. And Big then, watch guy, John Mayer. Loves watches. Huge. Got one of the biggest watch collections in the world. John boo, Mayer. Boo. And you know who tonight is? Kesha, babe. Whoa. She, Kesha. Did, she, did she have sex with a ghost on it? Well, funny you should mention it. We we played off of our because we write according to the guest. We played off of our ghost uh, right. show, and I I'm I'm with her on her show as a psychic medium. I like Kesha. and they they electrocute me through the whole thing, and I can't I can't let on that I'm being electrocuted <laughs> <laughs> while I'm literally calling the spirits. They are shocking my entire body. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm getting a reading. Yeah, oh, dude, how it was fun bad. was Kesha? It was, yeah, she, she was great. She, 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 she was down seems for it. awesome. She was down for it. Kesha seems awesome. Yeah, and we were like doing that thing. We were across the table from each other, like holding in, like we couldn't. You can't laugh. because yeah. it's gonna blow the whole. Load. I Kesha her mu no, but not this part. Kesha her music. I love her music. I love um um uh Die Young. Yeah. That that song. But all her because I when I was a physical therapist, 2011, 2012. She's got bangers. She's I used to listen to her. My love is your drug. Love yeah. is your drug. My Huge. Love, love. And then and then feel your heart beat. Yeah. And it's me in a tongue. She's got kids. Die what about young. The, what about that collab with Pitbull? Yes. It's going down. down. I'm going to burn it, Baba Doo. And Kesha is not only an amazing performance, but she's wrote, I don't know which ones, but she's wrote some of the most classic it's, songs of all time. Yeah. She wrote the national anthem. She did. Yeah. She did. She wrote that. And she wrote the Hail Mary and the Our Father. Not a lot of people know it. <laughs> Kesha's great. But the bigger question <laughs> is what do you think? Uh, yeah. Am I wearing a shirt or a jacket? I think that it's a. Uh, I think it's versatile, and I think that you could call it either. I got a new name for it. When you wearing a you, shirt that could be a jacket, you know what you're wearing? A jacket, jacket, or a jerk. I like a jerk better. Is, yeah. is actually, jerk's the winner. Ask the uh, ask the bot what it thinks. But Thursday nights, ten o'clock, True TV and TBS. Right now, we're building momentum. You guys, are, here's another thing you do: put it on your DVR. Yeah, put it on your DVR if you don't watch it live, which we want you to watch it live. But if you watch don't it, watch, it. watch it within three days on the DVR, watch it with that's the what they count. Three days after it, uh, that's all they count. And in practical, and if you're a Nielsen family, watch it. And in practical jokers is the show that we want to see. Yes, the guys have a put deal, and they'll put on another show regardless. That's but true. we do want to see the impractical jokers. <laughs> yeah, we will have, we, have we want to do we want to do another. One. We do want to, we want to do another. You're going to see them one way or another, legally contractually. Yes, but, so but do that. And the tour is on right now. Practical Jokers Live. The tour. Uh, yes. Dot com. And this week, actually, we're uh, at Prudential Center in Newark. Newark. Uh, we are at the Dome in Wallingford, Connecticut, and we're at the UBS Arena in Long Island all this week. Wow. Niagara Falls too. Too, but and Kesha's, still, Kesha's opening for them at Prudential. That's right. Now, Kesha didn't talk ghosts with you. You didn't ask her about ghosts. Um, we, we, well, we talked ghosts like fake because I, I was. Oh, I you was never. A, you didn't earnestly ask her. I don't know. I don't think I had much of a ghost conversation. I was too busy getting electrocuted. Yeah, because they had to test the electrocution on me first. <laughs> now, so what they does can't it just feel electrocute like? me. That what does it feel like, bro? 
Not good. First of all, first of all, I already got electrocuted in season nine by Adam Pally and John Gabris, and they thought it was Love so their funny. Show, their vacation show on yes, TV. Absolutely, a hundred and one places to party before Love you die. Love that show. I watched it on a plane. Love it. Love those guys. But they thought it was so funny. It's the first time we ever. It's the first time we ever brought back. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a lot of things on planes. Yeah. yeah, I watch. I watch Anthony Bourdain on a plane. Yeah, rhymed. Yeah, Anthony Practical Bourdain. Joker's on a plane. Yeah, for sure. Um, first time they ever brought something back, so I got electrocuted again. 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 Now, let me ask you a question. And they put shock collars on you. They're meant for large animals. I wanted to, which. And they put them all on my legs and my arms, and then they have a control panel, and there's levels that go from like zero to one. And 100. the guys were controlling the, the levels. The intensity of the levels. And, dude, it is. You can never. Ever get used to it? Did you have a diaper on? You could never prepare for it. No, I actually though. Because you should have actually. I'm being serious. Like that, that could have caused an accident. I, I did wonder afterwards because we didn't check with any any physician. <laughs> if because they jolted me for one hour, so like afterwards I was just wondering about my heart, my yeah, heart the electro yeah. things like that. But you were fine. Uh, I will tell you this. I don't want to give much away, but this is giving it away. Before one of the one of the bits in the new tour. I come out, they don't know this, but under my clothes, I'm wearing them. And I do a whole bit, and we pull someone up on audience uh, from the audience, and they electrocute me whenever they want while I'm doing my bit. Wow. And I've done it like 10, time, <laughs> 10 times already, dude. I got to go out there with the shock collars on. Right. And I have to pre-test the levels before we go right. out there. So they have video of me every single show in the green room testing the levels until it hurts because... Yeah. The commitment to the show. It's a lot. The commitment we made this show, show interactive. No, you made the show interactive and the commitment. This new one. Oh, the live tour. There's like three or four big interactive bits Because the, like the live tour, you go, the commitment to that is worth the tickets. Go go get them. But then the commitment to your actual show that you do in Practical Jokers, Thursdays, 10 p.m., True TV and TBS, is kind of making me feel like how could the views not be going up week after week? And even if the person making the decisions is treating this just very black and white, you have to put some emotion to it say, despite what it is, yeah. this is something your network needs. Hear us, David Zaslov. We painted if the you're Ukrainian watching, flag. And we know that you are. We painted the Ukrainian flag for you. <laughs> now, let me ask you a question. I've been getting shocked on stage. Electric shocked on stage. I wanted to ask you this. I actually, I actually thought of this when we were driving in today. Would you, for the show, get shot in the leg? Like a shot with a gun a in the bullet. Leg. A bullet. Would you get shot if I told you safely, even if this hits the femoral artery, we will save your life? Well, that's the first thing I thought of was that artery. Would you get shot by a sniper where they pinpoint actually they shoot you right above the kneecap? Would you get shot in the leg for a punishment for the like grand finale of the show? Would you let someone shoot you with a gun? Absolutely not. You would say no to that? I would say no. I already have two Jaden tattoos, man. Like, the first one was enough. I was going to say no to this, but the kid came and posed for it. I couldn't do anything about it. Right. I wouldn't get shot. We already said, we actually have a joke that I'm going to shoot a harpoon through Murray's chest for the finale. For the finale. <laughs> yeah. But I told you what we did for the movie. For the movie, we wanted it to be terrible. And the, the original punishment for the movie was that someone was going to give away a kidney. Because we wanted it to be like- It's amazing. Good, but bad. Right. And so, and then they told us legally, like they, the insurance would never cover that. I saw a funny tweet once that said, Impractical Jokers is a definition of white people shit. Really? That was a good tweet. No, I don't think that. Yeah. We have a well, no, large, because, large minority audience No, no, well. no, 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 no. Def, no they, they, what, oh, like we, we you're how, so crazy? Exactly. Okay. That, that's what the tweet, like, no, the tweet okay. was positive. It meant okay. like white people shit, meaning like they'll do anything like, you know, they'll say white people, that's white people shit skiing and, you know, jumping <laughs> off a building <laughs> yeah, or something like we, that. Yeah, yeah, it was we, like, they're like, we did do two skits out of, out of, out of, out of 1,000 yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two skiing skits, I meant. What is now, yeah, who is this? Um, this is, well, Murray just got hit with the harpoon. How hard is it to fall asleep after being electrocuted all day? Good question. Uh, actually, when you come out, I actually have marks on my legs and arms that are like deep divots. Still like that, right that now. Black and blue. <laughs> no, all right. That's a cross. Oh, That's, that, look at this. He got a crucifix tattooed. 2003, uh, April 2003, road trip to New Orleans, Electric Ladyland tattoo. You drove from New York City to New Orleans? In a minivan with five other people. Fun? The drive was horrible. <laughs> The drive was hard. I get motion sickness, and I was in the back for a portion of it, and it's like driving in the back of a bus, and the this kid that was driving was swaying, and I almost vomited a Shout lot. Shout out Sway, by the way. Yeah. Sway in the morning. Sway, sway in the morning. God bless him. He'd be Five good fingers of death. On, he'd be a good guest on Hey Babe. Yeah. Oh, I would love Sway. I love Sway. I know love you know Sway. him. Yeah, no, Sway, come no, on. No, personally. How Sway, come on. Invite Sway to the party. Please invite him. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> this guy, since I got this, it was $60, and I got it in 2003, 20 years so ago. So it'd be about point. 96 now due to inflation. Yeah, it'd be, but I got it, and it was it wasn't symmetrical, and I have OCD, 
and this has bothered me for 20 years. So what the kid's name was Bailey. I'll never forget it. And I think they threw me to somebody kind of new. So you didn't get and Bailey, or Bailey was the new Bailey kid. Bailey was the kid that did it. I wonder if Bailey can fix it now. He's got 20 really years tell, of experience. You but can't sell by the it. way, I would never want this right now. I'd never want my tribal on my leg, which you know about right now. Yeah. And I would, I, I don't really want the Jadens, but well, I would keep this on my arm. And these on, on Staten Island, I was driving the other day on Staten Island. Prove it. I'll show you my, um, I, I record my drivers because I also, I drive an Uber. Okay. On Staten Island, they, they have a tattoo removal place that is brand new, just open. They said remove the tattoos, painless tattoo removal. If we want to go do all it. that business from Pete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remove. Put no, back I, it's hard. That's, it's not painless. That's a lie. It's have more painful than though? the tattoo. What do you think is more painful? You getting electrocuted by Kesho or getting your tattoos removed? It's probably close. I'll tell you yeah. that much because it fucking hurts, dude. Right. I, you can't, I can't control my audible yelps. You like if it, I go, yeah, <laughs> I do that. I'm sorry. Sorry. I should have warned you, but pay attention. I know. Yeah. I got, uh, I feel like I just got electrocuted. Yeah. Um, you know what you're, you'd be great at Sal. If, if, you know, if there, there's a single guy out there, like one of your friends or whatever, you're a great matchmaker. I think you are one of the guys who would be able to match make because both parties would trust you and say, if Sal thinks you two are a good match and Sal is advocating for it's this nice man compliment. and advocating for this woman, I think out of all my friends, you would be the best matchmaker. It's a nice compliment. In my life, I have match made. I've since moved away from it because it's pressure. It's, it's not always going to work. And then I don't want the hat. If it for some reason doesn't work at all, then I'm putting myself in a position. But you're just bit. good at it. Yeah, but I've, I've match made people that are now married. Really? Yes, that I has have. to make multiple, you feel good. Multiple. That they've, they've stayed. Because if they get divorced now, it's not your fault. No, no. I've like did it my, can't I come did back my, to I, you. At one point, I'm putting that marriage in a basket and sending it down the river like Moses. Yeah, and then it's and whoever then you're, was. you're not yeah. Uh Moses got sent down Mo the river. Moses got sent yeah. down the river. Right in the to basket. Send your kid down a river is risky. As well also <laughs> I mean, it's, it's risky. It is it is risky. Also suspect, right? Because yes. baskets by nature are woven and have holes. Yes, as 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 right? Pippin Venetti would say sus. It is sus. It's sus. Yeah. They don't say pecked. Yeah, put your kid in a basket and send it down, down the, the river. river. And you're trying to claim that you still love this kid. Yeah, you're trying, you're to, trying to give it a better life. You're trying life. to do something helpful Could for get it. eaten by an alligator. It depends on the currents. I'm not sending my kid down the river unless I fucking Mr. G says I can. That's wild. Local New York City weatherman reference. Yeah, uh, remember George Whipple? New York one had eyebrows like oh, like two yes, fucking George, goats. Google George <laughs> Whipple. This guy, I mean, literally, his eyebrows were like Beastie Boys shouted him out in a song. You, you clean up a puddle with this guy's eyebrows. The guy's eyebrows were li they literally George looked, Whipple's eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> Can we name this episode George Whipple? Yeah. <laughs> he, is he? He's got. Is he no longer with us, George Whipple? I, from what I know, I think he's kicking fine. You think he's fully alive? Google it. I Google don't. George Whipple. But you know, I used to hear about him, and now I don't. I will say that. Yeah, because I wonder if his eyebrows, as you age, like if you go yeah. bald as you age, do the eyebrows bald? That's such a choice. I'll tell you what, right now, that thickness, that kind of fullness. I'll tell you right now, I want to see his baby picture when he came out <laughs> because I feel like I feel like if there was even five percent of that, he was a baby that had huge, huge eyebrows. Here's the thing: it is a choice to grow eyebrows like that, but you could make that choice and I can make that choice right now and never get to that level. You could never... You can't get to that level. No, it's That's a choice, like, but it's also genetic. You have to be able to do that. And how about this? He has to make that decision like, I'm not going to keep up with this my whole life. Let it go. And it'll be my calling card. Right. Because if I had those, I'd be like, I, I need to do maintenance. We need right. to do manage this. Right, 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 right. But he's like, no, you know what? I'm going to be... I'm just going to let it fly. Let and it, it is a calling card of his. Yeah. No, George... The, George he's alive. George Whipple, what does he look like now? He looks like Jay Leno now. Oh my God, I haven't seen George Whipple in years. Look at how long he, his hair grew. He went fully white haired. And his he hair doesn't got look long. the same. George Whipple's got hair like a founding father right Why now. Why he does. Look at those brows, bro. Look at the brows. He's got to be in his mid 90s and he looks fantastic. Yeah. You, you he, think he intermittent fast? He probably brow beats the shit out of himself. Yeah. <laughs> I Would you ever have George Whipple on Practical Jokers and electrocute him? I don't have anyone on Impractical Jokers and Electric Town. You know what would be fun to have George Whipple on Impractical Jokers and if he loses his thing, you shave, shave his eyebrows. Shave it. Oh, my. I'm That's the get him on the phone. Get him on the phone, V. Yeah. Oh, Whips, invite him to if the you're party. watching and we know that you are, come on. You do what you got to do. You keep him. You don't. You shave him. Either way, it's a story. Dude, you know what would it's be fucking awesome at this party we're doing in New York? Well, what, what day does this come out? 
This comes out on the 9th. March 7th. Two days ago, you had this party. What would have been awesome? Face. Yeah. You were there. Everybody was there. Yeah. Vice, I had Yolanda Vega greeting people as they walked oh, in. Could you imagine God. if I could do that? Can You can't afford Vega. Though. I don't know. but Nobody I, can. Would you let me charge Yolanda Vega to the no press card and say, I got Yolanda Vega for a big event for us, and she's yelling, Yolanda, she's yelling, sell Volcano, yeah. as everyone walks in. I and I said, it's 5Gs, but I put on no press. She would say, I wouldn't even bat an eyebrow. I'm, I'm being serious, though. I wouldn't. You would be like I, I'm like I be I would be like that's that's why that's we a, have that's a company fine. card. It's fine, worth it. That you do it, and because okay. she knows she's a queen and we love her. Book it. I want to. We want her on the show, guys. We've said this in the past. If somebody knows Yolanda Vega, because I she wrote to me, she gave Yolanda me that autograph. She gave me that autograph. She said she loves the show, but I, I thought forget, it was a friend of hers. No, who gave me that goddamn autograph? I think Alyssa gave me. I got to talk to my. I got to get this woman on on. We got to get her on the next. She's time, royalty. If we decide to do a live, hey babe, which we might this year. And Yolanda Vega doesn't introduce us. I don't know why we do the show. If we either we either get Yolanda, we work the next live show that you and I will do for Hey Babe around Vega's schedule. You know what the opening word is? The opening thing. What? She goes for the New York State Lottery. I'm Yolanda. Hey Babe. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. And then if that costs five G's, then that costs five. That G's. costs five G's. It's fine. Yeah. And you know what? You know what the thing about Yolanda Vega is she seems like a person. That she would do that, willingly have a good time, and then also I think she's the type of person she'd come with homemade baked goods for us. She would have baked something for us and gave it to us. I know. Like a Rice Krispie treat I don't know something. much about it, but I feel like I know Yolanda her. Yolanda Vega is somebody who I guarantee you, her kids' Little League games, she made baked ziti, she made baked goods. She was that mom who did that, and I yeah. guarantee you I'm right. I, I would agree with you. I would agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Now- That's a gig. What's a better gig, hers or Vanna White's? Gotta go, Vanna White. Vanna White. So, th what is it? Thirty. When did Wheel of Fortune come out? Was she there? Was she a day one Wheel of Fortune? Vanna White has money like a senator from literally just flipping. She might be the most. She's got Oprah. She's got Judge Judy. She might right? have more money than Pat Sajak, and I would pay Vanna White more than I'd pay Pat Sajak, and I love Pat Sajak. I know. Came I think she's seventy-five. What? And 75. she started in nineteen seventy-five. She was the first. She was day one. They were the faces of the series, yeah. But 81. it's well because Pat Sajak 81, wasn't the original. Uh, how, how old is Vanna White? Fifty six. Sixty five. Sixty three. Sixty mid sixties. Sixty seven. Sixty five. She's sixty five. I said sixty three, sixty seven. The answer is sixty five. Right. Right in the, in the middle. middle. Yeah. Okay. First she said fifty something though. Which was remember a, that? Which was a ridiculous yeah, thing for me to say. Yeah. She. What's her salary? Get a new net worth on her. Net worth on her. We should play the net worth game. That's fun. You ready for Vanna White's net salary? Worth? Ready for Vanna White's net worth? Ten mil. Her net worth, yeah. not salary. I'm Her gonna salary's say, a million a year. I'm going to say net worth. You are way out, way wrong. I'm I'm going to guess she's thirty. She's thirty plus years at, at, at a network gig. Let me and edit. she's you can't can you I replace her? Look out in the streets because it's going to be riots. Can I get at my edit my guess? Yeah, eighty million net worth, Vanna White. <sighs> That's a lot. I think. I think. She's probably worth well. Net worth is tough, right? Because because yeah. let's I don't like, know what kind of investment th think she about made. What you made and what you've spent in that time, right? Right. You can make five million a year, bring home two and a half over ten years. You're not worth twenty five million, no, because of the cost of living. What you're worth is what you have in assets. So you can make five million a year for ten years, make twenty five million, but only be worth seven million because you spent the twenty. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So what she's worth, I'll say she's worth twenty million dollars. Benatia, pimp, what's the answer? Eighty-five million. Holy shit, dude! <laughs> I mean, you're I'm on, on fire. fire he's today. on fire. <laughs> he he's he's, he's on, on fire. fire. NBA Jam. Wow. Now what? Eighty-five million. What's her? That's insane. That's insane. And you know how good the gig is? She's still doing it. Thirty years. She's worth eighty-five million dollars. <laughs> she's still going in. <laughs> yeah. She's driving in. She's parking. She's paying tolls. No, she probably has a driver. She's still driving in, and she's flipping those letters. And I bet you too. I bet you they have it down to a science where they film literally for like two months, and it's for the whole year. Or they do like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, fifteen shows. It what's says, the she's What's the insurance? Four days a month they film. Four days it's a month. Oh, tell me. Who has a better job? No. What's I, Pat Sajak's net worth? He's worth $15 million less. What? How did that happen now? How did that happen? That's sus. I think that because Vanna White, first of all, Vanna White. She's the one. Do you think She's she has her, her wrists you think insured? I'm tuning in for Pat Sajak? Oh, dude, I look oh, for Vanna White. Yeah. Have Vanna White on practical Nobody, jobs. nobody. Come on. Do you think that she's got uh, insurance on her wrists? 
I guarantee to, right? you she does. I guarantee you she has insurance. Could you imagine she? Could you imagine she broke her thumb and she? How do you? She has to protect her wrists and hands at all costs. How about this, Vanna White? Follow me here, Vanna White. Outlasted technology. She used to turn the letters. Now all of a sudden we got digital. They kept her. Now she taps it to reveal the letter. They don't even need her. Okay, they could have replaced her with no one a long time ago. They oh, just show the letter. I letters. found her hustle. I found her hustle. What oh, is she that? Has a side hustle. She's a fifteen million dollar a year hustle. She just is in charge of casino slot machine licensing. Of her own? I think of her own image, and oh, then she oh, started oh. buying out. Oh, wait. No, Wheel of Fortune is the the most popular slot there is. But I don't think she's getting a kickback from that. I think she must be doing a third-party side wheel of whatever. No. I'll tell no, you what. No, we're, trying you. To, we're trying to get slot machines. I'll tell machines. you what I know. Well, you should. <laughs> I swear to God, no, I'm not joking. We talked to like three people already. No, you need slot machines. Oh, if you're out there and you do slots, and I've said this before, Call me because we want to do slime. And you know that you are. Let yeah. me let me tell you something. I think that Why the only you? person who has made more money or as much money by saying as few words, there's only two people in the history of the world who are multi multi millionaires. But they have not. They've they haven't said. They've said minimal words. I'm Vanna sorry. White, yeah. Stephen Hawking. Oh whoa! I mean, he's, he's a genius. I thought you were going to. He, he can't. He hasn't talked. I thought you were going <laughs> to go with Teller. Who? Uh, Teller. Penn and Teller. Penn and Teller's another one. Forty year top of the top of the peep uh magician. You don't say Jack. Okay. I met him one time. He spoke. He don't say Pat Sajak. No, he doesn't say Jack. Penn if and I'm Teller. Pat Sajak, how's Teller. Pat Sajak not getting in on that that money? Penn and Teller, Vanna White, Stephen Hawking, most money, least words. I agree. And uh yeah, that's and uh well Molly Jeff Dunham talks. Who? Marley Matlin, maybe? She's a she's a very famous deaf actor. Oh yeah, Marley Matlin. Uh, but that's she? Yeah, that's yeah. not the same. Tape she mouth, doesn't require the tape boy, the kid with the tape over sure, his face. Sure, 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 sure. That must be nice. Not saying anything. You in, don't say in, anything. I mean, Vanna. What? I think if we're if we're being honest here, though, you she still does it four days. I a think month. that is the cushiest four days a week. No one can replace her. Four days a month. She cannot be replaced. She's gonna be replaced though. Think about that. The two of them, they got to go out like a blaze of glory together. No, one's not gonna do it without the other. But that show is gonna live on past them. It's gotta. It's like the Price is Right. It's like Jeopardy. Keeps going. Jeopardy's got. I mean, we never thought we'd see a Jeopardy without say uh, without uh, yeah, Trebek. Trebek. But do you think that Wheel of Fortune, uh, uh, like with with Pat Sajak and Vanna White, can continue? Because it it just feels so iconically them. Dude, Bob Barker was replaced by by by. What's his name? Cleveland oh, Rock. Drew Carey. Drew Carey. Who looks like my father. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's and he's he's really out. He's like a hippie dude now. He's got Drew long Carey hair. He wears sneakers with a suit. Who, Bob Barker? No. Well, no. Bob Barker. God, Drew God love Carey him. wears. He, yeah, he's very relaxed on the show. You know what I don't like? And it, can can I, if the producers are watching, because I was on Price Right. I didn't get on stage. I had a funny story. I went to Price Right with Dom Herrera and Steve Byrne and my buddy Rob Fee. And we were sitting in like the third row center. And like Drew Carey came out and like just saw Dom and Steve in the audience because I didn't know him. But he went, he came out and he was like, hey, and he went, Dom Herrera. They were friends probably yeah. comedy for 25 years. He was, what are you doing here? And Dom was like, I came to see the Price is Right. <laughs> did he get a big laugh? Yeah, I don't remember. But anyway, they got, they did away with aisles and seats now they have everybody in these little pods that are together i guess it was remnants of covid they didn't change but now everybody's sitting at like a like a little booth together like three or four people and it's like half the people in the audience they used to be like come on down and find and then they used to have to like sidestep out of the out of the row yeah, for like makes, five minutes it makes it fun and then run down the aisle like <laughs> you know and now do they, they encourage you to do that or people just do that i think i i, I don't know i think they encourage you I has anyone ever fallen down the aisle oh, so many times you got to watch prices right like fuck ups like people are live on tv have fallen. yeah oh taking <laughs> headers man yeah yeah, yeah. but anyway my, <laughs> but but can you pull one up pimpy yeah, yeah take just on. somebody eating it on prices right so so so, so vanna though vanna's four days a month turning letters She's an icon. That's that would is be. Is she the richest think, person you, in the world named Vanna? That I know of. What about this? You think she hates it? I do think she. Or hates do you it. think like no, no, no? There's no room for hate here. I come in four days a month. I'm family with this these people, and this has made me. I'm as I'm as rich as that per, any person could be. And she doesn't even have. There's no guesswork. When somebody says the letter, it lights up. She touches it. That's all you have to do. Right, because in the past, maybe she used to have to be like, uh, she has to, she have to listen. You don't, she doesn't have to listen if she doesn't want to. She just see as long as she can see the light, she yeah. touches it. Yeah. Has there ever been a time where the light it lit up and she didn't, and the letter didn't come on right the screen? She had to hit it like an old TV. 
You think? I hope so. And I hope they leave that shit right in there. Leave it in. Honestly, if I was them, I would go back to the turning. We know you don't need it, but we appreciate it. Yeah. Go nostalgia. Go old school. Go a ridge. What's the point? Turn the letters. Yeah. Yeah. I um I was gonna say something else about a television show. Oh, I don't know. Go ahead, continue. I went to the Maury Povich show, it's the only one that I this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. That's right. I love it, BetterHelp. You and I use it. We talk we were talking about it in the car ride over. Yes, I was telling you, you about my therapist and how helpful he is. All at BetterHelp. My dad, Tampa Tony's on BetterHelp now. That's right. Everybody's using BetterHelp. And you would tell me how you had one that you didn't like, and then you switched. I switched. And it was it was easy to do it. It's and that's it. It's just a simple you talk you take the questionnaire. Yeah. They they team you up with who they think would be best for you and, and whatever problems that's you right. may have. You know, because mental health is very serious. And it literally, better help, it's like life-changing. The best part, you don't have to go to an office. Everything is done online, comfort of your own home, private. And it's literally, if you've ever benefited from from therapy, you're going to benefit from this. Yeah, and it's... Just, it's not just about like I have a problem. It's about finding a, a deeper like a knowledge of yourself and self awareness. Yes. We're always changing, right? Yes. So my set of problems last year are not my set of problems this year. My yeah. thoughts and the things that I'm worried about or the things that I you know I need to just kind of get through and work yeah. through are always changing. I told you you changed, and I told them we had a meeting about it. I know we did. You changed, it. yes. And but better help is helping you change back to the to the to that. To that old cell. If you're thinking of starting therapy, yeah, uh, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, like you said. Uh, you fill out that questionnaire, and you get matched with a therapist. You could switch therapists at any time, whenever you want. No additional charge immediately, and you don't have to give a reason. You just switch it up, baby. BetterHelp wants to help you. Can you can ghost the therapist if you want. Ghost them. Do yeah. do whatever you need. Right now, if you go to BetterHelp.com, that's H E L P. BetterHelp.com/slash Hey Babe, you're gonna get 10 percent off your first month. That's better H E L P dot com slash hey babe ten percent off your first month. Please try. Have you ever left your cart full and abandoned it online because all of a sudden you got hit with the shipping costs and you were like, no way, this isn't worth it? Then you should know about ShipStation. In a landscape where free and fast shipping is the norm, it can be hard for smaller e-commerce businesses to compete. With these big places, and I'm not going to name who they are. You know who they are. So you keep yourself competitive with ShipStation. If you have a small business, use ShipStation. You can lower your shipping costs. You can make returns easy. Keep your customers happy. All the time you save from automating your shipping tasks, keep your business growing all year long. Give yourself that extra time, okay? There's a free trial, and it's quick setup. Now, this is what you're going to do. It makes it easy to grow your business. It handles your orders from every marketplace in one single dashboard. It effortlessly integrates everywhere you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and all those, okay? You manage it from one dashboard. You automate your routine shipping tasks. You print shipping labels. You easily compare rates and delivery times and automate delivery notifications. This is the job, a full-time job of a person that's being automated and brought to you very conveniently by ShipStation. With the best discounts in the industry, you'll never worry about overpaying. Get up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates. And if that's not enough, use our promo code to try ShipStation free for two months. Keep growing your business all year long with ShipStation. Use promo code HEYBABE today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, promo code HEYBABE. Ever went to an, I went to a Maury Palmer show. I think they were doing it in Stanford, Connecticut, and I was at one where he was, um, he was not the father. Oh, you were really, really a, a big that? one where he was not the father, yeah. and it was like the entire crowd believed this woman was so convinced he was the father. She was like, "I have not had sex with anyone in ten years other than you." So this cannot. This but, is so she was just hedging a bet. Like yeah, she, really, she went full in, and then he goes, "I am not the father." And then I swear to Christ, this is an episode. She goes, "It's your brother." Oh yeah, and it became yeah. another. I think. I think what happened was they, they. I don't think they outright lie, but first of all, they started producing that show. It all started with Springer, and then Steve. Remember yeah, the, Steve Wilkos. Steve Wilkos, who still does a show. I think he still Stanford. does his show. I, there's a still. I just did. I did New York Comedy Club of Stanford, Connecticut, which is a really good club in Stanford, and I drove past the Steve Wilkos studio. So when that when when Jerry Springer hit, that was you could that was like girls gone. It was like the it was like number they one was selling. All greatest hits, Jerry Springer, greatest hits DVDs. Do you remember that? Yes. And then, so they got to the point where they knew they were going to fight, right? What I think is they c- produced them and coaxed them to be like, Which is hey, annoying. if you say that, you know, I, we don't know, but if it if it's like it's his brother, that's crazy. Is it his brother? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So you think it's all, okay. And then okay, you can so tell, I, got like, duped. I think in the beginning they used to swing, but then I think like 
now it becomes an now you see like they go to hit each other, but they hold like you could tell they're not really going at it. In the beginning, though, there was a few where they really went at it. They really went at it. Yeah. That 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 shows is Jerry Springer on? Is that not a thing anymore? Well, no, because how are they supposed to compete with TikTok? You yeah, know? it doesn't. It just uh, it's even girls it's gone trash. wild. It's like what's the well, point that, of that? That you, went out the window because no, I, well because it was oh because it was t- didn't he go to jail? Girls? Isn't that guy on, isn't that guy on, on the lamb? Yeah, who's the guy? He was a creep. Yeah, I don't what know. about guys gone wild? Ooh, start it. That's a great no press brand. Yeah. Guys, come on. <laughs> That's the new show coming balls. on YouTube.com just, slash No Press Network. At a party on the beach, just flashing your balls and shaking them. Yeah. Like, These guys are going, going wild. wild. Uh-huh. It's like tropical music playing. We all have daiquiris. We're like, woo! Oh, dude, how about this? I was flying home. I forgot to tell you this. I was flying. This would have been two weeks ago now, but really yesterday. or two. Yeah, yesterday. I was flying home. The person in the aisle across from me started projectile vomiting all over the TV screen in front of in front of them. <laughs> no. So he, I, here's what uh, happened. across the aisle. So I'm I'm sitting here in the aisle. What, what airline? The, uh, this was uh, you know, uh, uh, Delta. Okay. So I'm sitting I'm sitting oh, on the, the TV. Yeah, we're both aisle seats. So I'm you know I could touch them. So all of a sudden, they didn't get to the bag. All time. of a sudden, you hear we're all eating like that, and it was like. Uh, like oh, on the, the person in front of them? No, 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 no. Did it just hit the screen in front of them? Oh. So it didn't hit anybody but, but them. But who saw it? Well, I saw it, and it happened to be that nobody was sitting next to him. So me and my partner were they watching 101 Places to Party Before You Die? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and and they were watching Impractical Jokers because each week it just keeps getting more and more viewers. <laughs> so and so so oh, that's gross, dude. How do you, okay, what do you feel? Do you have a responsibility? Now, that person knows you saw. Right. Do you feel a responsibility to make them feel okay about it? Yeah. Or can you even keep in your own disgust? What happens? It Take what, me through your mind. Well, first of all, I was literally in the middle. I was in the middle of eating. I got a uh, egg, I got a onion, uh, egg quiche. That's mm-hmm. what they had I to know offer. it well. Quiche was good. It wasn't bad, actually. It had raw onion. I liked it. Meeting the quiche, and I'm chewing the quiche. They start projectile vomiting. I go, "Are you okay?" <laughs> like I, I looked at them. I was like, "Are you, are you okay?" Because I was eating. And I had the you sound like the guy from Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> yes. I was like, "It likes it when you put the quiche in the basket." <laughs> so, so I swear he's going. He's going, yeah, he's going, so I just, it's just what I was watching on the show. It's disgusting. And I said, okay. And then the, with that, the flight attendant comes over. So I'm kind of out of it, just listening, whatever. He was went up to the bathroom, cleaned himself off, comes back. It smells like, does it, does it, it smell? did, it did, it did. It smelled like, it smelled, it smelled some alcohol. He was definitely drinking the night before, which is fine. That smell though went away so quickly. They came out with a, um, I would. A, uh, it, like the grammar school? Yes. Like the flakes? And, yeah, and that takes the smell away, like almost instantaneously. But it was rough. I'm not going to lie. It was rough. You might have vomited. Oh, that, that product stood the test of time. Yeah. They used to pull that when I was in kindergarten yeah. when someone vomited. With the sawdust. Now, Delta, they're still doing it for years. they do. So, so then uh, an hour goes Who by. the television down? The flight attendant. Oh. He moved to the seat next to him. Because it was empty? That's what I said. It was empty, so he oh, got lucky. Bless be him. He got. He just moved to the seat next to him while they were doing that, and then he sat in that seat for the remainder of the time, and then he was fell asleep a little bit. Then when he woke up, he said, like he got up and like kind of leaned to us. He goes, "I'm, you know, I'm, I'm terrible." I was gonna sorry. say, was he profusely apologetic? So so sorry. Because that would be more defined. I said, "Ah, dude, you know, it happens." The guy next to me was sleeping. I said, "Ah, it happens, man." And I go, uh, and 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 he was like, he goes, "Yeah." He goes, "I was eating my breakfast." He and he says to me, he "Goes, do not watch Anthony Bourdain Vienna episode." Don't watch the he episode. He really thinks he puked from watching something. Because he said, he said, I was eating the breakfast. He had the same thing as I did. The quiche and eating the breakfast. And he goes, don't watch, the, you know, the Anthony, it was the Anthony Bourdain. Sausage. Vienna. No, what happened was he said, I was watching it. They're doing an episode in Vienna. He was like, I love Vienna. He's like, they're watching it. They're talking about sweets, whatever. He goes, and then they go to a farm. And they're, it, we're, I'm watching the episode. He goes, and out of nowhere, the guy that Anthony Bourdain's talking to, a goat runs by. He grabs the goat in a headlock, slits his throat. Then they cut to him turning the goat upside down, bleeding it. And they cut open the goat's stomach and start pulling his organs out. And then the next cut is them eating the organs. And then I vomited everywhere. Mm. And I was like, yep. He didn't vomit till that part. That's when he vomited. He had a lot of time to change a channel, yeah. look away. Well, no, no, no. It was building up. So... Why didn't he get the bag out? Because it just came over him. And and also, he had the full tray. Uh, it's tough to grip. You can't move when you're in the tray. Oh, God, that is hard. Vomited everywhere. And I was like... I would th- I, I, There's no way I wouldn't have thrown up. There's no way. 100% thrown up? I've done it. I've thrown up when people throw up. Yeah. 
Oh, and then on that same flight, a uh, flight attendant, uh, the flight attendant, um, the head guy, he was like a gay guy, made an announcement. He goes, um, "Whoever stole, um, there was a cell phone out up by the by the bathroom by the flight attendants. Whoever took that cell phone, there will be no repercussions. There will be no nobody will call the police. But we do need that cell phone back. Whoever stole that, he was like, it was an otter box." Cell phone. That is so funny. So I'm hoping someone came up and be like, "I told totally thought this was my cell phone." As as what I know, nobody claim, nobody wow. said, but somebody stole that guy's phone, or he fucking put it up his ass. I don't know. Wow, that's that's that he took that upon himself to make that announcement and to put that out there. Like, that was. Well, bold. I mean, he wanted his phone. I guess it was he his. Somebody stole. It must have been. I mean, who? He's not going to do that for somebody else. Do you believe it? When do you? No. Would you have? If you took it. And he was like, we need it, no repercussions. And you're like, I could, I could say I thought it was mine. Holy shit, I have an auto box too. Or do you believe that when you get up there and give it, there's going to be no repercussions? He said it. It is a verbal contract. But I got to think that that person, even if they're having a, a, a crisis of conscience, they're going to think he might turn yeah, on Imagine that He has no reason that... Somebody from the from the coach is just from a coach is like, how do I legally know there won't be any repercussions? <laughs> Not that I stole it, but how would I one hundred percent? How can I guarantee? Right. How can that person guarantee? You got. I would have been like, is this it on the floor, dude? Did I ever tell you I was at Casey Joseph's bachelor party in in New Orleans and we went to uh, not when the time New Orleans when you drove and got that tattoo a different New Orleans a different time. time yes we went and we we went to a laser tag place great there's like twenty guys right and we rented out a whole one of the whole rooms ourselves. Right. It, it was actually, a, it was like laser tag, but it was like uh, arcade. It was it was a big compound, right? And we left but all of our- But there were coke and hookers at the laser tag. There, yeah, there were coke and hookers there. Yeah. And, it's uh, a bunch of party. Yeah, we were shooting the, the hookers with lasers. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. No. laughs> so, so there was like this entry. There's, a, there's like a room before the room, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not outside. You go in this room, it's like a holding room like this, and that's where all the jackets are and the guns yeah. are. You put it on and you get into the mood and the lights are neon and people are telling you, okay, this is, you press this one, and you go in and, right. and they tell them so we leave they leave all your jackets and bags here this is safe no one comes in here but actual jackets not not jerts no not jerts not sh jackets. jackets so everyone leaves their stuff in we go in it's a goddamn blast we come out like a half hour later whatever it is they rank you it's all that we go we get our stuff, get our stuff. all of a sudden Casey's phone is not in his jacket right and he's like my phone is gone and he looks through everyone looks through all that everyone like, the phone is gone so he's like, this is insane. Like, I need my fucking, I need my, you, you can't lose your phone, right? Especially and it was, on your bachelor party, was, you don't want to lose your it phone. It was there, okay? So we ripped the room apart. It's not there. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We go to the people. We're like, my phone was there. It's not there. Someone came in here and had to have taken it. And they were like, okay, we have, we have, we have cameras. So we all go into the, wow, that's awesome. we all go into this booth with the security guard and we're watching, we're watching, we're watching. Well, sure as shit, a fucking middle-aged woman just walks in there, closes the door behind her, walks up. Well, now she, we don't see her inside there, but she walks in, closes the door, and then she comes out, and it's and we watch her do it. We she like, an employee? No, she wasn't an employee, right? So we're like, holy fucking shit! Like I, we can't believe we caught the person. You actually witnessed. How it. about this? She's still there. So we see her there. We have her on the, the tape, right? So everyone's like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? She's still here. Like, this is fucking crazy. Was she this, playing laser tag? This is, she was there with her kid, bro. Wow. Right? And so we're like, this is going to come to a head. How does this work itself out? She's here. We Do we confront her? And then the place was like, we don't want to confront her. We're going to call the police. They call the police. And we're like, well, what if she leaves? She, we can't can't really hold it back but i don't know so then everyone goes and stays at all the doors because we we want to make sure that we don't lose this is a good bachelor party <laughs> <laughs> so we're waiting at all the doors that everyone's watching and she has no idea that 20 something people know and then the cops arrive and they tell her what happened and they approach the woman and they're like look we have you on camera taking a cell phone she denies it right she's like i didn't do it i didn't do it she's like listen we have you on camera getting a cell phone. She's like, I, I didn't do anything. I'm here. It was her son's birthday, bro. Right? And at first we were like, fuck this woman. Like, who does that? She was a regular woman. Like, she just walked in and stole someone's cell phone. It was like somebody's, literally somebody's mom. Yeah, like, what What are you doing? Yeah, right. What are you doing? You know? So so then, um, so the, co the woman goes, listen, I, you have a choice. I could search you right here, right now, or I could search you in the bathroom. And she's like, I don't, I, I don't have it. She's like, let's go. She takes her into the bathroom, in the stall, and the woman comes out with it. 
she, the police she officer comes out. She with denied it. it till the end. It was in the woman's pussy. She, yeah, it was in her pussy, and she denied it till the end. And then it took a little coaxing, but she got it out. The which, cop. Is, which I kind of respect that she wrote. She wrote with it to the end. I do respect that a little bit. Yeah, that. it took a little. You had to get it ready to come out. Like they, she, she read our passage from a romance novel. It came out. Came out. Yeah. And then the, the cop comes out with it. And she, what do you want to do? Like, do you want to press charges? And he didn't press charges. Which I would have done the same. Kid, I'm not pressing charges. Kid was there. It's his kid's birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did she apologize? Anything? Nothing? Uh, I think she... I don't think she really apologized. I think she was like... She's a kleptomaniac. I, yeah. I, I, I got to call Casey because I don't remember exactly, but I think she was just like... She just gave it and then... Call him. Went back. Let's call Why not? Yeah. If we're, we're going to do it. Let's, let's see if... Let's Casey, by the way, around. who sings the theme song... Of the Hey Babe intro you yeah. hear every week, which is going to be changed by Sal's voice recording. That's and right. And who directed Impractical Jokers. It's oh, and the director K of Impractical Casey, Jokers. Casey has been with us since day one on Impractical Jokers. Uh, he was a writer, then he became a head writer, and then now he is directing the show. And he's, yeah. he's killing it. Absolutely yeah. killing it. You know we love Butcher Box. We shout it from the mountaintops, okay? You want high-quality meats delivered right to your door monthly, cancel at any time. They do all the work for you. You get that peace of mind because you're getting high-quality meats seafoods you can trust they i mean we're talking 100 percent grass-fed beef wild-caught seafood free-range organic chicken everything humanely raised no antibiotics or hormones delivered to your doorstep cancel ship uh trips to the to the supermarket your time is money there's free shipping always you can curate the boxes to what you like or choose from pre-selected boxes i mean it can't be more convenient uh, Butcher Box came into my life, and I have never bought meat again at the supermarket. It just comes every month. I cancel. I pause anytime I need. It's really wonderful. Uh, exclusive member deals all the time. Okay, get free. Ch Listen to the deal they're doing right now: free chicken nuggets for one year and ten percent off your first box when you sign up today. Okay, that's a twenty-two ounce bag of gluten-free chicken nuggets in every single order for a year on them when you sign up at butcherbox.com slash heybabe and use code heybabe and that's on top of the 10% of your first box. Claim the deal today at butcherbox.com slash heybabe and use code heybabe. We love ButcherBox. I um, and K uh, Casey Joe's, uh good boy Casey Joe's, pulls off salt and pepper. The only two people who pull off salt and pepper are him and Mike Cannon. Beautiful him boys. and Mike Cannon are two beautiful salt and pepper boys. They should be yeah. actually the new salt and pepper. He's he's so good. His hair is amazing. Best hair in the game. Amazing. What's up, boy? Hey, baby. Uh, we're doing Hey Babe right now. Hi, Casey. Oh, my God. This is Chris Stefano. Live, babe. We have on the phone Casey Jost, a.k.a. the writer and performer yes. of the Hey Babe theme song. And the new song, yeah. and the new Salt and Pepper with him and Mike Cannon. Salt and Pepper King and also the director of the show. Yes. I was telling the story about your bachelor party and how we were at Laser Tag and the woman stole your cell phone and we caught it on... <laughs> Oh, we caught on the security cameras, and we called the cops, and we blocked the exits, and we confronted her, and then the cop took her into the bathroom. Now, I don't exactly remember the ending there. Like, the cop took her into the bathroom, and I know that you didn't press charges. You're a good guy. You're a good guy with a great head on your shoulders and a kind heart. But did she show remorse? Because wasn't she denying it until the very end, until they pulled it out of her pussy in the stall? <laughs> It was out of her titty. Okay. Uh, no, okay. but it was out of her titty. But it was for out real. Of her titty. It really was. Yeah. It was in a bra. Uh, oh, a bra. Bra. Right. Yeah. There's a couple of things. All right. So you you know can you tell can you tell the story in your own words? Well, I have a few questions. Did you talk about the t like how she was there for her son's birthday? Yes, yep. I did. Yes, we did. Okay, good. You did a good job then. Okay. Um, <laughs> and we had her on video, but we didn't have video inside the room where she took your phone out of your jacket, right? We had her on video going in and coming out. No, we got her on video taking it out. Oh, I didn't even remember that. Oh, yes, that's right, because when we saw it, we erupted in the, in yeah. the right? We were like, holy fucking shit! It's, like, it's crazy to solve a crime that just happened. Yeah. <laughs> it, we solved a crime. Dude. It, that just it, happened. It, the, uh, uh, How many it, times does a crime happen to you, and like yeah. within 10 minutes, you solve as, it? As soon as you saw it, you went, you, all you heard was, <laughs> investigate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, okay, so right, tell us, Casey. Continue. All right, so we, first of all, it's my bachelor party, and we go to play laser tag. Because you guys, because here's one thing I know about you and your friends, you guys fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't, it, it, I know strip club, just laser tag. Yeah. Yep. And we so did we, do go-karts, too. Yes. But the yeah. fast ones. But there were cocaine and hookers. <laughs> yeah. The fast yeah. ones, the 50 mile an hour ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is like cocaine yeah, and hooker. Yeah. <laughs> so I, we all go to play laser tag, and then suddenly, um, as we're like hanging around the place, I realized like, oh, my phone's not in my little, I think it was like I had a little fanny pack as I do. And it wasn't in there. 
And I was like, oh, what's going on? I ask around there. No one knows. And for some reason, I, you know, I think my brother, Colin, was like, why don't we see if they have security cameras? So we go back there and they're like, oh, we do. This is like now 45 minutes to an hour later after we had even done this. We, so that's we were why like, we also shocked that she was still there because she's like, she's dead. whoever took it is long is gone. gone. They're right. not going to take it and linger. They have to know that there might be security cameras. Do you understand? I'm, I'm, I, please re- keep telling it, but I'm, I'm remembering now. It was, I swear to God, one of the most exciting moments of my life. You don't. You never in this situation. Never. Ne- justice. Yeah. Swift yeah. justice. Immediate karma. Yeah. It's like the Wild West. Oh God. Continue. Right. So, so we we look and we see a woman take it, and we're all like jaw to the floor. And then in that moment, someone in like our party runs I out. Told right. Story right on here, babe. Leaves and comes back in and goes. She's still here. Wow. Oh my God. We oh like, my God. That was we a crazy nuts, like one dude. two. So then, it was like miracle on ice. so the police come. She pulls it out of her titty, and then does she deny? Does she apologize? Does she do anything okay. remorseful? She went into the bathroom. Right, she was denying it till yeah. the end, and then so the cop. Is, yeah, go ahead. So this is really important because, thankfully, at like a, like a, a a female police officer comes, and she's like immediately she's like feels caught. She's like I have to go to the bathroom, and so she, she goes said in. She has and to the, go. And the, and the the police officer is like has a hunch and like won't let her close the door because she, he, like you know she kind of knew that she would probably take the phone out right. and try to flush it. Right, she, really I thought she brought her in to check her, but the woman insisted she had to go to the bathroom. That's right. Right, trying to get out of it, trying to flush the evidence. You know what I mean? Right. Like so, so she goes into the bathroom and she goes to sit to pee, and then she's like, she sees her kind of pull it out, and she's like, no, don't throw it out. Like I see you, you know. And so she comes out. And that might have been a crime, is, actually, though. Watching so her she, through the stall. Oh, t- oh, yeah, probably violated some rights yeah. there, so we should probably follow up. So then so then when she comes out, she kind of apologizes, and this is the thing. She apologized, and she said, oh, uh, the devil got up in me. That's right! The I de- forgot! I forgot about that! And that's the name of this episode. The, the devil, devil got, got up, up in, in me. me. <laughs> and, and, and I and forgot because we lost you, our shit when she said that. I was like, fuck her and the devil. Yeah, you you had the best response. You were just like, "Oh, really? The devil got into you. like." The devil- <laughs> Do you remember how how mad I was? I think I even left you a voicemail that you might have saved, where I was furious and like, "Fuck her!" Sal, you were you were egregious, Philbin. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's the name of the episode. <laughs> egregious, Phil. Wait, Casey. So she actually did apologize to you in the group, though. She yeah she did she like she said yeah she basically was like um because because the officer was like in front of her was like do you want to press charges and I went through all this in my head and I was like there's no way I'm coming down to like this weird like outside of New Orleans town to like <laughs> to like appear in court over like a, an iPhone five right so. So I was like, no, I was like, just, just don't do it again. And please set a better example for your son who, who was like wa- running around, just like trying to enjoy his birthday. It was his birthday. It wasn't even his birthday party. It was just him. She took her son to this, to this like uh, just them, bro. arcade, which is for adults anyway. Well, I don't it's know so why sad. kids were there. It's so sad. And uh, no, there was, there was some kids shit there, wasn't there? No, it was all kids. I'm, I'm kidding. It was, it, all- it, it, <laughs> was, it was really sad, but like. Give me a fucking break now. Like, like own it. Just own it. Be like, you know what? I'm in a bad way. You know what? I have a compulsion. I'm going to shoot you straight. I'm completely honest. I'm mortified. This has never happened to me. I won't do it again. Could you find it in your heart to show a little mercy? To fucking pull religion into it. Pissed yeah. me off. I was like, I was mad. I said, if she would have told you straight up, I say, don't press charges. I said, but she said the devil got in her. Fuck, you press charges. I don't care. Right. But then I felt bad for the son. So then she, and then and then the police just let her go. Oh, really? The devil got into you on your son's birthday at the arcade. Yeah. The devil found yeah. his that, way yeah, in. That, yeah, that was the same response that the guy who killed four students in Idaho said. He goes, sorry, the devil got right, up in exactly me. exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, this devil seems like all over really? the place. It gives, it gives some people something like the ability that. to play that, guitar that really easy. well, and it also makes, makes someone take a phone and put it in their tits. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's like it's oldest trick in the book. Put the phone in the tits. Well, actually, we sh- you guys should have actually known since it's about bachelor- she should have known that it's a bachelor party. And said I'm the stripper, and then started pulling Take the phone out of her tits and, a, and doing yes. that, and then it becomes if she a had thing. Any sense? So, and she says, "One of you guys hired me." Yeah, and then kind of turns it on you. Where's my money? And steals and even more shit. And from then you. she goes like this, and then she goes, "And who wants to play the devil right now?" Yes. 
and get up in. That would have been understand? smart and get up in. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then, then you guys would have said, we can't do it right now. We have bowling next. Right. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. We had the bowl next. It was midnight bowling with bumpers. And yes. let me ask you a question. What did you feel in the moments after catching her and knowing she was there? Remember we were, we remember we stood at the at the exits. <laughs> like I was like I'm not letting, not letting her leave. Yeah, you know because if she's gonna go leave, I'm just gonna be like. But what we, what was because I know how excited I was, and I, if I recall correctly, were you as excited as me, or were you not as excited as me? I think we took separate cars when we left, yeah. but yeah. I was ja I was so j like jazzed. It was like getting off a roller the coaster. Adrenaline so rush, dude. Right, right. And you left me a voicemail like just to be fun. And I wish I ca I wonder if I kept it. I think I you did because I think years later you, you told me you had it. Oh, I gotta look. I gotta look. If and you we'll ever find in. that, Patreon. Yeah, we'll drop it in right now. We'll That's on the Patreon. Right yeah, but. But I think, like, yeah, you left it, you, and just to paraphrase it, you were just like, this is for the bitch that stole Casey's phone, you know, or something like that. It was like, yeah. get it out, get me out your titties or something like that. But yeah. I was so, I was just so, do, do you remember, though, this was also, we tried to go to a gun range as well. Do you yeah. remember that? Yeah. What happened there? And, all right. So that was crazy, too, because the guy tried to, like, really upsell us oh, on, yes. like, this gun range. And we left. While, while we're talking, people were just walking in with loaded shotguns pointed at our faces, just passing through. There was like no regulation. And all of us got so freaked out. It was in the sticks of New Orleans. They tried to upsell us, and like I've never been to a gun, I've never shot a gun in my life, but other people had, and they were all like, "That can't be right." And every time they were like, "That can't be right," the number came down a little bit. They were like, "This is so sketchy," and the fact that people were coming in—he saw like, our city slickers coming from a mile away. Yeah, he's like, yeah, "Let me show you my magic bullets." Yeah, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, would you like a magic bullet? <laughs> <laughs> that's a different kind of southerner that's in yeah the, i don't know i just did a foghorn leghorn but god bless him all right yeah, well yeah. i'm glad that you were there to answer the call oh always man i'm always i'm yeah. always here and yeah. to the woman that took it if you're listening we you, know that you are we know that you are mm -hmm. make a better example for yourself and your son yeah all right yeah have your son listen to Hey Babe every every uh, exactly. Thursday and watch a Practical Jokers Thursdays at 10 p.m. Right. on TBS and True TV. And True TV. We're looking for ratings. I guess, I, I, honestly, my before I go before I go, I, the only thing I, I think that like my message to the woman is: don't be a fake, don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, don't hesitate to say Hey Babe. If you have a microphone, please drop it. <laughs> That's Dude, it. That's, that's you should have hung up right there. That's it, man. Yeah. I actually, no, I no, I dropped my phone. It broke. Bye, guys. <laughs> I, love Bye, I love you. I mean, wow. I don't even know if I knew every word like that. That he was really, he wrote it. That was. I mean, the fact that he said, "I don't know what happened." The devil got up in me. I mean, that's the name of the episode. This episode it has to be called devil "The Devil Got, got up, up in me. me." Yeah. The devil got up in me. Or shack it. Or shack it. <laughs> that is. Yeah, it's one of those things where it because it because a piece of shit, you know what? Because if she is religious, then she's using that religion as a scapegoat, and that's not good for anybody. Have you ever stolen anything like willingly stolen something? Yeah, but at, not as an adult. No, as a teen. Yeah, no, or, or even you, probably less. Even. Le yeah, yeah. See, that's the thing. If you're stealing as an adult, it's a real issue. Yeah. I I might have taken like I might have went to the get a refill on a soda more than I should have. Right. That I might still right. do. But as a kid, I stole a couple things. But yeah, that's it's. But has there never been a moment where the devil got up inside you? You know who said the devil got in him? You remember Tiger? <laughs> he was oh, a rapper named yeah, Tiger. I think he dated like I think he dated like he's, uh, Kardashian. He's dating Avril Lavigne right now. He is. Yeah. Well, he dated. I think he dated the girl who's Card uh, the Jenner, right? I think uh, Kylie. Name? Not to be confused with Tigger. Remember, there was Tigger who hosted 106 in Park or BET oh. show, and then Tiger. Yeah, and big I, Tigger, right? Big Tigger, and I yeah. thought they were the same person. But it's different. TYGA. I think he's saying Rack City, right? Yes. Is that Rack City, Tyga bitch? Is. Rack, Rack City, yes, bitch, Tiger. Yeah. yeah. By the way, love that song. Great. Anyway, Tiger, I think, got caught having sex with like a, a, a man or a woman that was a biological male became a woman. Transitioned into a woman. I, I don't know if it was or a, a trans woman. I, I, yeah, it might have been a trans woman, and and then I think he his reason was that the devil was was the devil was, or maybe he said that he didn't do it, but the reason he's getting accused for it is because the devil's working overtime. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> look it up. Look it up. Tiger says the right. devil got, is working overtime. Well, I know yeah. he, he's yeah. a top earner on OnlyFans. I've heard that. Tiger is. Yeah. Is he having sex with women on OnlyFans? Uh, yes. yes. Got it. Oh, so he went from. Rapping to having sex on OnlyFans. But he's doing both. But Devil's who's but, 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 wait, 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 wait. <laughs> who's who's buying 
tigers only vans. Isn't it really a male based thing to females? No, no. women, women. Don't so people are paying you know money who to see own OnlyFans. Venetia, Venetia has a friend on OnlyFans. Okay, that's public knowledge. Take us through it. Don't you have a friend who's on OnlyFans? Oh, that friend. Yes, who's like very. I, isn't she? Does she have an OnlyFans? Yes, she. We does. shouted it out. On we Chrissy Chaos. On, on a Patreon episode. Oh, it was a Patreon episode. Sorry. <laughs> but what guys are on there? Oh, is it gay men that pay? I can't see no, a woman being like, want- I'm paying Tyga a recurring subscription fee. Because once you see him have sex once, can't you just be like, I mean, all right, I saw it. It's it's the same difference as a podcast, I, I guess. I don't know. If you listen to it once. So Tyga is to doing, okay. And he's a, a top earner. That's what I've I've read. Yeah. I, I've read that he's a top earner with Bod... Bad baby, right? Yeah, from Doctor Phil. Too. Yeah, she's big, big money. Yeah, I heard that. That was yeah. like, yeah. But anyway, but you've did, never did played you the, the devil for something in your own life. I don't think I have. I don't think I have you. Wow. The only way, seriously, the only way you have free will. The only way, honestly, at this point, and my mother, who's very religious, would admit to this. The only way that the views wouldn't keep going up on Impractical Jokers if the devil was working overtime. That's Only right. way. <laughs> if they yeah. didn't go up week to week, it, the, I would say devil working but overtime. But don't you think God and the devil are always working overtime? I think they're it's a one, hard job. I think they're one and the same. I think you look at it. Is the glass half empty? Is it, is it half full? I think everybody's... I think you look at one thing and you say... You know, look at how horrible this is to another group of people. They say that was Jesus helping us out. I think that it's all in the the perspective. Beauty is. But look, if you believe in the devil, if you believe in God, you have to believe in the devil. Believe in both. You have to believe in both if you believe in one. Yes, I, I, to a bit, I, I don't believe in religion. I had a bit. I don't believe in religion because I don't want to believe in the devil. So if I don't want to believe in the devil, then I can't believe in God. That's basically the premise. Now, when you die in. The afterlife, how are you going to explain that? How are you going to explain that? I hope there's an afterlife. But but do you think you're getting into the good part if you're out here not believing? Oh. Do you say... I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. My like, question waiting is... Waiting for the second coming. My question is, do you say if you get to the gates of heaven... Yeah. And he says to I you... I live life as a good person. Though. And Jesus says to you, God says to you, Sal, explain to me, explain to me... And he shows you all the times you denounced religion. Every single time you denounced from the time you were a baby to the time you died as in 121 years. Denounce year old is baby. a rough word yeah. to just yeah. say that I, I choose not to believe after. I went. I was raised Catholic. I went to Catholic school from preschool to senior year of college. But you denounced So I don't all. believe. But and anyway. He, and he's standing there with Kane Tanaka because yeah. you know she's in. Yeah. With Kane Tanaka. Kane Tanaka probably has a high position. Yeah, I think Kane Tanaka... But it might be treasurer. But even Kane Tanaka maybe can't advocate for you. Right. And he says to you, the, geez, the great great God says to you, what what are you going to say? What are you going to say to explain it? Yeah. I think your genuine only response to him has to be, the devil got up in me. Yeah, got to be, right? That's all you say. I'm, I'm sure he hears that all the time. Yeah. That's like a hack excuse. That's low-hanging fruit. Or here's what you do. Or you say, I meant every word I said. I meant every word I said, you piece of shit God. Kick him in the genitals, whatever they may be. Press the elevator. Say, I'm putting myself down here. You look him right in the eye. You say, this has been hey, babe. Don't be a fake. Don't be a flake. Don't run away from your feelings, babe.